should be live now. Let's have a look when whether everybody's appearing on screen and everything. Oh, like Tim. we can hear the huffing of Tim. <laughs> Tim, Tim's on his way. <laughs> I know. You know, I was I was walking down Stonegate just back just about ten minutes ago, and this antelope, this <laughs> this Great antelope thing. ran back. Tim, I was I was walking down Stonegate, and I saw you running past. I don't think I've ever seen you run before. <laughs> no, I, I do run. Is it, it hasn't helped that I've uh, I tripped up? Oh no! Anyway, oh, we're, oh. We're, we're, before you swear, we're actually live, and we started anyway. So okay. you're going to catch your breath and then come and join us. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, tripped up. Are we are we successfully live? Yeah, we are live. Um, we've, we've gangster just said good evening, everyone at Revolution. Good evening, gangster. Hi. Thanks for joining <laughs> us, and thank you, everybody else. <laughs> is um the uh, the the volume and everything is okay? Is it? Let's see. Yeah, all good. Brilliant. Well, uh, I was going to start off with uh, introducing Tori to you guys. Uh, obviously, you guys have uh, met her through the Kickstarter video and, and a previous live stream before. Um, as I hopefully all of you know, we're doing a special, uh, well, it's like a gift, I guess? Yes. Um, a special gift to you guys today. Uh, Tori's going to be drawing uh, one of your suggestions that you've sent in. Um, and Alex will send you a link in, in a moment to everybody's entries. Now we've randomly drawn one and Tori's going to be drawing it during this hour and you guys can guess which one <laughs> she's drawing. So we'll, we'll show you periodically the work in progress. I'm uh, sorry, who wins it? We don't, well that's, that's, that's a gonna surprise. That's going to be right. So not, not, the person, <laughs> not the person who suggested this. Uh, sorry? Not the person who suggested this. So the good. person who suggested what Tori's drawing is the person who will win the Great. Video. Okay. So we randomly pick them and they'll be the winning one. But everyone out there in Blogger. Fantastic. World, and you're gonna we'll show from time to time what yeah. you're doing. Can you guess what it is yet? <laughs> We've been we, we are now uh, do you want just before we get going, do you want to tell everybody about this wonderful meeting that you had last year? Oh with uh, can you guess who it is yet? Uh, Tim and I, um, last year we were fortunate enough to get to meet Rolf Harris. Uh, in York. In York, in York, yes. Uh, just down the road there's a, a new art gallery that's just opened up and uh, walking past the window there was a painting that I fell in love with and uh, both Tim and I growing up as Rolf Harris fans just couldn't, you know, help the fact that, wow, we've, you know, Rolf Harris is going to be here and he was here for the opening of the gallery and he's got a gallery of his artwork there and uh, so we invested all our money. It's become a little engagement present, but we bought ourselves a uh, Rolf Harris painting and we actually got him to sign the back of it for us and it's congratulations uh, to, to Rolf, uh, to, Rolf uh, to Tori and Tim. And yeah, absolutely wonderful. I love it. Pride, pride but you, you couldn't have been born when two little boys had two little toys, no. each had a wooden horse. No, but I've been brought up with it though. Because that would have been <laughs> early 70s. Yeah, I'm still a baby there. Yeah, and Jake <laughs> the peg with the extra leg, which I'm not sure you'd be allowed to do these days. No, probably not. <laughs> but it really was an extra leg in those days. Yes, it was. Yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't be that now, no, necessarily. No. <laughs> anyway, moving swiftly on. Yeah, um, no, that's, that's brilliant. And Tim, are you ready to join us? Tim really was. <laughs> Tim really was hurtling at great speed. <laughs> it was. It was. It was a wonder to behold. Well, he really wanted to be here because it's not often you get Tim no. to run. <laughs> I know. <sighs> here we go. The food at the end of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I thought I'd just kick it off with just a, a really brief interview with, with Tim um, and about the kind of stuff that he does for uh, Broken okay. Sword, really. Can I disappear? Um, yeah. Because I was only Tim Standard. <laughs> <laughs> the replacement. Uh, yeah. No, and, replacement. That, you know, and now that you're here. Yeah. So, right. Talk to you later. Yeah. Shall I come on with your own? Do I get started on my drawing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. T oh, okay. uh, you're about to start. Time in. Right. Ready, please. <laughs> go. Um, so... I totally got this note wrong. It, it, my notes actually say Tim co-founder of Revolution. Wow. <laughs> I don't know. I've been not That's not right. <laughs> Not in the world. It's um, uh, Tim. Well, I was being the co-founder <laughs> before I was uh, born. The graphic artist. <laughs> um, so, so Tim, why don't you describe briefly what you do for Revolution? Well, I I look after all the kind of all the graphics, icons, user interface, and I kind of mock things up for people. So um, we have sort of an idea before we send it out to artists. And uh, just like 
just keeping everything in the broken sword style really keeping an eye on everything in the kind of graphics and the UI and uh, you know I also do a bit of layouts and just I'm pretty much busy all the time sort of doing all the kind of the, the graphic work in the you know digital world as well as all like kind of the print stuff that we want printed or you know um, like the uh, Collector's edition, I was thinking about that, and the Nico Nico's notebook. notebook, and mm. pretty much just keeping, you know, my eyes on everything. Yeah, oh, totally. Like, Tim has <laughs> been amazing during the Kickstarter because, of course, he was working on BS5 while at the same time doing all of the graphics for, um, for all the updates and stuff. So, you know, um, the history of Broken Sword, yeah. um, the kind of the mock up for that, that was all Tim. Mm. Um, and what, did you do anything with the goat as well? Yeah, yeah, we've, I worked with Tori to get all the kind of the goat things up and running like the t-shirts and all that sort of stuff. So it was kind of a collaborative you know, thing where we all kind of came up with some ideas. I mm. mopped them up, we saw what we liked and then, yeah, we went from there, really. Yeah. So um, in terms of the stuff that you've done for BS5, what, what do you find the most challenging aspect of the job or what's the most difficult thing? The most done? challenging thing is to keep keep the broken sword essence mm. you know keep the style in broken sword you know we're, we're looking at we're closely at the first and second and this is kind of the derivative improvement of those two and we're trying to get that back if you know what I mean yeah and that's kind of the hardest thing is to keep your eye on that ball yeah because <laughs> you might say oh that's amazing that's great you know mm -hmm. in one design but then you look at it on the uh, and it looks fine, but when you think, just right, this is broken sword, you know, it, sometimes an icon that I thought was good doesn't fit yeah. in the overall design. Sorry if that was a bit of a weird noise there. Um, okay, so that, that makes sense. And yeah. what about, what, what do you think is the easiest aspect? Uh, the easiest aspect, I think, is literally the, the easiest thing is like getting people's ideas like mm. people do have a lot of ideas and it's like if, if, I, if I'm stuck with something the easiest thing I find is if I'm stuck with some inspiration you just ask around and uh, in the office we've got some really great people just to get some like oh how about you try this way because everybody's different because we've got like mm. the artists you know the the department where we've got all artists and then we've got like the you know the implemented designers and then we've got the programmers yeah. and all their brains work differently so it's great because the easiest thing is literally find a solution to a problem is mm. we ask about around and normally a program will come up with something that the artists haven't even thought of so <laughs> so um yeah, yeah and it's just just really uh, i suppose you know i thought it would be the hardest thing because i was i was kind of <laughs> just because people are saying a spaceship flew over the revolution office because I moved the microphone sorry it was slightly distracting um, <laughs> Star Wars, yeah. yeah we are um, actually uh, religion just asked a really good question um, which is I have um, oh, sorry I thought it memorized not modernized whether we've modernized any of the the characters but I guess that would be uh, well, that would be EM, wouldn't it? Well, yeah, I suppose in characters, but maybe in if I, I could say it on like icons and style, mm. we've had to like there's a real thin line. Like we are kind of making it HD and making it more, but we're not because with the original Broken Swords and the second one, there was a lot of detail, but we have to make that detail show, but then in HD, so we've had yeah. to double up the detail. So mm. I suppose that's modernising, but yeah. we don't want to go too far in like space age sort of like HUD that comes up for you know it's kind of we want to keep it true to its essence yeah, but we true. want to make it you know an improvement mm. if you know what I mean so yeah so that's kind of the fine balance that we have to keep we have to keep our eye on it mm. so um because uh, I don't think you know some you know some of the original Broken Sword it works perfectly and you know if it's if it isn't fast, you know, yeah. don't fix it. So, we, you know, we have to be careful. But, you know, there is some modernizations, there is some things that we said, why haven't we done that before? But, um, yeah. Yeah, sounds great. Yeah. Um, so, because, uh, you know, you're working on the Kickstarter awards, so I thought maybe you could tell us a little bit more about what you've got planned for 
things like is it the box and the history of broken swords? Yeah, well, literally, we're we're working on the uh, history of broken swords and the uh, Nicholas notebook and the teacher, and I'm we're working all those out because then the box will come after that. Mm. So to fit everything neatly all in this box. So you can just slide them all away and they're all safe and sound in the box. Mm -hmm. And you know, what I'm finding exciting is I really want to get to that box but I've got a whole fire <laughs> on it. Now. Yeah. So I have to work out everything else, all the dimensions of everything else. Mm. So uh, that should be exciting. What well, about Nico's notebook? I remember you were talking about things like... <coughs> <coughs> yeah. Um, Nico's notebook, I think, well, I'm... You know, I've been having a kind of a. I always, every day, I kind of put stuff away. You know, if I think of something really good, and then I'll put it in this folder, this Nico's notebook kind of random folder. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to kind of putting all of my ideas together. And yeah, there'll be like receipts, little things like that, and just background into like Nico and how she was feeling at that time, because she's got you know, it's got some notes from like the first and the second. So, you know, it, it and it'll be from Nico's perspective yeah. in certain parts. So, you know, when she's trying to write a story. So there should be quite some nice little insights, you know, a little bit of giggles. Um, and there's lots of, uh, you know, we're just going to make it like a little treasure trove of nice little memories mm. and also little things that get you thinking, really. Yeah, sounds great. Well, let's wait for Also them. some art. There will be some art. There will be just <laughs> writing. There will be lots of drawings and sketches and all that stuff because uh, you know we might make uh, Nico a budding artist you know yeah we never know oh that's a great idea actually I like that <laughs> um, it's not going to be me <laughs> <laughs> yeah it'll be Nico <laughs> Charles was about to join us again thanks very much Tim okay we've had um, some Can you questions what it is yeah? about <laughs> 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 we've had some questions about the posters actually um, what they are in the background that one over there that's Broken Sword, The Shadow of the Templars. Is that the original? That's the very original one, yeah. yeah. What happened was we worked with Virgin. And um, what, what Virgin felt was that it should, <coughs> instead of um, the normal adventure, which is very sort of cartoony, this should be much more dramatic. So this is actually um, a convicted convict uh, on death row. It's the photograph of him. And I believe, I'm not sure if that tattoo is real or not. Um, but the interesting thing is, and God, I hope I'm not going to repeat myself. What was great about Virgin was that they really cared about the marketing. They came up with these marketing plans and they'd, they'd come up here and they'd share. And the way that they'd test whether a box worked, because of course in those days everything was, was sold in retail, mm. is that you'd get the artwork, you'd stick it on a box, and then you'd go to the local game station and stick it there and just see what people's reaction was and also mm. see whether it worked or not. Yeah. And it was an incredibly valuable thing to do because you mm. straight away you saw actually whether it would stand out or whether it just blended in with everything else. Yeah. And, and this was great. And as an aside, Broken Sword 2, which has got the mask on, was intended to be that sort of style. But what had happened is I'd been to the British Museum. Oh, I love the British Museum, which of course was featured in the game. Mm. Um, but I loved, the, I loved the, um, the, the British Museum. And I'd seen this extraordinary mask, Mayan mask, with um, w which the, 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 uh, the, the sort of skull, skull, skull mask um, with gems and things in it and, and that was used for the artwork as well, it was great. Mm. That, that one. Um, Can people see it? It's kind of hard to see isn't it on the camera? Yeah, you see that that was um, THQ's artwork, um, obviously Broken Sword 3 The Sleeping Dragon, um, and uh, that's not the box artwork. Um, personally I don't think that that is enormously arresting. Uh, mm. Obviously the logo is much much more dominant than the image itself. It's quite a nice image, but I think it's probably a mistake. It's a bit mm -hmm. dull. Yeah, but you can see the big difference between the approach that some like a company like Virgin had, um, yeah. as, as opposed to THQ. Um, I think a few people have actually asked us about where can they get posters like these. But we we get them off eBay ourselves, don't we? So we 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 have we, we we're going to start printing them, and we will okay. start. Um, we, we will have an online shop at some point. Yeah. Um, at the moment, our focus is obviously finishing the game off. Yeah. And and um, communicating. I hope people feel that we're communicating well. The uh, uh, developer diary, second developer diary went out and uh, any feedback that people want to give would be much appreciated. Mm. Yeah. Um, people seem to be very keen on the posters, so we better Great. do that then. <laughs> Fantastic, lovely. Terry, did you want to show your progress so far? 
<laughs> oh, that's kind of hard to see. Oh. Okay, I'll just move it a bit closer. Oh, gosh, the camera's over there. Whoa, whoa. whoa. It's a bit dark. It's a bit dark. dark. Oh, it's just like a black shirt. <laughs> Hang on. It Wait. is hard to see. That's that. Oh, that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, no one can see it. <laughs> oh, the problem is it's been drawn in, um, in, in, in red. In red, yeah. It's just an animation pencil at the moment that when I start getting the graphite on there, it might be easier for people yeah. to see. Well, <laughs> you drawing Nico with her, her, you know, relaxing with her shoes off. Yeah, with her leg on. Oh, uh, her foot on. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Oh well, 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 we'll show you um, more of the progress, <laughs> and hopefully you'll be able to see more. Uh, what we'll definitely do is we'll scan the picture in before we send it off to the lucky backer, so, so that everybody can see it. it. The, uh, the final You can make it a desktop or something if they wanted it. I don't know. I, don't, I doubt it would be like Um So, okay, that's that's great, We uh, the posters. Um, so I'm going to just move on to some of the questions that people have sent in. Um, here's one from Hamid, uh, which is, uh, who asked us whether there will be any rainy scenes. Will we have weather effects? and day and night cycles in the game? Uh, we will have day and night cycles. Remember that all the backgrounds are hand drawn. Mm -hmm. So instead of using dynamic lights, we will redraw each of those scenes. But yes, very much so. We, we, we will have multiple states for the, for the scenes that you go back to um, yeah. many times. Uh, as far as rain is concerned, um, I'm not sure. It's mm. hmm. a good question. Think about it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Again, remember, it's not so easy in 2D. As it would be in 3D, because it would be, it would be, because it would be a particle effect. <laughs> um, yeah. The other thing is that uh, what you, you know, I think you want l l backgrounds to be sort of aspirational. Mm. Um, and the the one thing I really hate in you know in art is when you have ambience, ambient light. And you know what you really want is you want sun, so you can create interesting contrast in colours, interesting contrast in in shadows. Um, so don't know yet. Certainly, there isn't any rain in the in the um, in the screens that we've uh, painted so far. Mm. Yeah. Um, what about Georgia or Nico's apartment? Will they be in the game? Um, Are we allowed to say anything? Well, <laughs> Tony's already shown the outside of Nico's apartment. That's true. So you can pretty much assume that Nico's apartment will feature. Well, she's always locked up. Yeah. yeah, well, <laughs> she's locked up. One of the things that uh, I said in the developer diary is that we've got to be slightly careful about spoilers because, of course, people are intrigued and, of course, people want to ask. Um, but at the same time, ultimately, we, we don't want to disappoint people, people by giving too much. So, so apologies if, if I'm a little bit cautious in the answers that I give. Mm. Um. <coughs> Okay, uh, uh, we're coming back to this this topic of figurines again. With with regards, since we were talking about the shop earlier with the posters, uh, Dusty Shinigami uh, was wondering whether we'll be selling T-shirts and uh, broken sword figurines. And I know we had a bobblehead. Somebody asked for a bobblehead. Uh, was it the first Kojam? A bobblehead. A George bobblehead. What a you know? great idea. <laughs> And a Charles bobblehead. I oh, know, Charles. That's a scary <laughs> thought. Uh, have you thought about this at all? Or? Uh, no, no. <laughs> Please give us suggestions. We're delighted. Mm -hmm. We're delighted that there's enthusiasm. Um, action figures. Uh, action figures would be would be would be great. Mm -hmm. um, what was fun after director's cut was actually to put all those characters together, and they're really really nice. Or indeed, the characters that we've got for this game, um, putting them all in a long line, and they're they're just great characters mm -hmm. because. Um, now, are you going to allow me to go off on a tangent here? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, <laughs> because <laughs> one of the things that I tried to convey, and I, I hope that it was interesting in the developer diary, is the idea of uh, creating motivation um, and context for mm -hmm. a player when they, when they come into a game. But one of the most important things also is to create uh, an empathetic relationship, so that uh, an, an empathy basically means you don't sympathise with the character, but you, you share the emotional journey. And the thing mm -hmm. is that in, in a film where you know, inciting instance comes after 10 minutes or so, um, you know, you have time to build the empathy. We have to build the empathy right from the very beginning because that is part of the motivation mm -hmm. that you have for a character. Yeah. And 
Um, there, there are several ways of doing this um, in a computer game because you have to do it so early. Um, one is to use really obvious characters, so you know, space marines. We all know that space marines, you know what they do, <laughs> they, they kick alien arse and they speak with a really gravelly deep voice and they're always American, <laughs> okay? Yeah. Or, or, or in the same thing, you know, well, not the known hammer space marines, they're English. But they still got gravity. <laughs> 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 they all speak and then you've got <laughs> elves, orcs, and oh god, you know how many times have we seen those characters? But immediately, you know, you see a you see a character in the Dungeons and Dragons environment, you know exactly what they're going to be like. So you you can either go for really cliché characters, mm -hmm. um, or, or or you can get licenses. So um, you know, if you play as Harry Potter. You don't need to build the empathy um, with all those other characters because you, you know from the film who they are. Yeah. Um, and, and then that's what I think is the genius of the Lego characters because mm. what they do is they, they take the characters, you, you, you build the empathy and then they, they joke because of the way that they can do it because it's not, you know, it's, it's so um, um, stylized. And then the, the, but the way we do it is to come up with characters that, that are stylized. Um, and so hopefully you can look at the character, you can see what what they are. So if you've got you know, the flower seller, you know you know she's a kindly, large, kindly woman, and you know the sort of things that you can expect from her. Yeah. Um, so that's why we, we we tend to push the characteristics of our characters so that you can empathise with them, mm. um, <coughs> and 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 hopefully they're not cliched. Um, or or if they are, then in a good way. Yes, I'm not sure you can be cliched in a in a um, in a good way, but 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 yes, <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yes, mm. yes. Yeah, we could have the action figures and then have giant paper craft because then you can fit them in. Yeah. Big <laughs> <laughs> printer for that. Yeah. Um, I mean, speaking of, of characters, and I, I guess this is one of the things that I think uh, I found a lot of people bring up the question of, you know, which old characters are we bringing back, that kind of stuff. There's a lot of love for for the traditional characters and the traditional uh, yeah. locations well, as well. Well, what we've got to do is we've got to um, we've got to balance new characters and new locations with old and I think we've done that pretty well. Uh, I'm not sure which ones we've announced yet. We've announced uh, Dwayne, Pearl and Dwayne. Yeah. Um, well the goat obviously. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think we've given hints about... Some the, return, the return of one of the, the, the really nice characters. Um, uh, and of course Lady Pimont appears on the packaging. Yeah, that, that um, But good. then there's also rather a nice character with a strange moustache that I don't think we've announced yet, but he does appear very early in the game. I'm not sure that we have so officially announced that many characters. No, we just sort of no. hinted at, it, at a few. <laughs> yeah. um, so, so we will we will be bringing back um, some of the some of the characters from before. Um, but, but also, what, what as I say, what people I think want is is a mix between uh, you know the, the, the familiar, which yeah. is the original characters and the original locations, but also surprise of lots of new characters and, and locations and. Um, I think people will find that this is a really nice mix. Yeah. What about um, locations? Uh, have we have we, are we, we going haven't really back talked about those? We, we we know that we know that we're going to be on a cable car, mm -hmm. um, but we haven't quite said where it is. Uh, does mm -hmm. anybody has anybody recognised it from the picture? It'd be very interesting. Mm -hmm. I wonder if anyone has actually looked up and worked out where where that cable car is. Oh, interesting. Ah, yeah. Because we haven't announced it yet. Certainly. Yeah. I don't I don't I don't ha I haven't seen any emails or anything where people have said, Oh, I know mm. what that is. Um, well people got the pig last time, didn't they? The, fly the flying yeah. pig. There is a little artistic <coughs> to it. There is a little bit, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but if you've actually been to that place you'd probably recognise it. Um, speaking of recognising real locations, we had a question on Facebook from Reb, um, who sent it through, um, whether the cafe in the first scene is based on a real location. No, um, no. And indeed, you know, what, what locations in the, the previous game? Okay. Um, well, in the first one, um, please, if you go to Paris, and it's absolutely spectacular, um, climb up Notre Dame. Um, if, if, you, if you're looking at the front of Notre Dame, walk round to the left and there's a little, little entrance. And uh, during the summer you have to queue, so get there early um, and, and wait. But you walk up and then you get this most spectacular view over Paris, which is what the opening scene to the Broken Sword, Shadow of the Temples is. Um, because you've got gargoyles on the other side and then you look over the same. So that is absolutely, you know, that is absolutely real. 
uh, and that's great. Um, a second one is, of course, the catacombs. And the catacombs are at a place called Montparnasse, um, and uh, the Montparnasse Tower. And very close to that metro station, you have the catacombs. And the catacombs were built, oh gosh, I wish I had this article, because I don't remember exactly which century, but it was, I mean, they, they, they were originally built to be by, by the Romans, because they mined the, the rock that Paris was built on before Haussmann pulled it all down to build his wide boulevards. Um, but the, the interesting story on that, am I going off on a tangent again? <laughs> you are, but go on. <laughs> the interesting story about that is that there's a place uh, called Les Halles, um, in um, in the centre of Paris, and that used to be where uh, all the markets were, and it was right next to this enormous graveyard. Okay, and there were just too many people dying, so they piled the the bodies in the graveyard, and they'd pile them up in great big esophaguses, mm. and then things kept collapsing. So you'd have mm. the fruit and the vegetable with bits of you know, well you can imagine, mm. it just wasn't really good at all. So um, I, I don't remember the date. I'm not going to hazard a guess because I will get it wrong. But in the medieval period, they decided that enough was enough um, and that they would move all of these bodies. And what they did is they, they took them all uh, in carts to the catacombs. And you have a place called the uh, Wyam de Moor, and the, Wyam, the Kingdom of Death. Um, and the Kingdom of Death, what they've done is they've, they've, they've actually put all the skulls together, all the leg bones together, all the, all the bone components together, and created these extraordinary patterns. It's really amazing. It's really quite scary, though. It, it is quite scary. It sounds very nice. It is really quite scary. It's building very blocks. <laughs> and what's, what's exciting is that you, I mean, you, you can only walk down a, a linear route, but you can see that there are lots of passages which are blocked with bars. Mm. And what I love the idea of is that there's a real sort of underground scene, and, and young Parisians will go through manhole covers into the into the sewers and then into these catacombs and explore and have parties and things mm. and it's it's very cool yeah. so so that's a very real location as well yeah um the help there's some more as well yeah um and i'll tell you oh i love i was so inspired that there's also the cafe yeah. I, was, I was driving back and this is uh, sorry i was in a taxi to an airport this was years and years ago and i love this it seems so typically french police that this French policeman was sort of trying to get the traffic and it was absolutely gridlocked and I promise you this happened and everyone was hooting and in the end he went and he went and sat and had a glass of wine <laughs> and, and then <laughs> fairly quickly the traffic just started flowing again That's and so, so that is so French um, <laughs> and we love I mean you lived in Paris I love Paris we're not being we're not in any way being anti-French we love France <laughs> but we love it for that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So again, that was one of the that was very much an inspiration for one of the characters. Mm. That'd be great to reference that actually in the game. Yeah, no, no, yeah. we did, we did, we did. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. that was that was the ref that was the the um one of the really useless policemen who who it. was in I think Broken Sword Two. Um. <laughs> um, Dusty Shinami just said um, that he understands that there's a street called Rue Jarry in. Uh, in France, did you ever visit it? Uh, no, and it's not, it's not, it's not directly, <laughs> but it, we almost certainly, um, that, that actually was named <laughs> by Dave Cummins, and we talked about Dave before. Dave was very bright, or is very bright, um, I haven't kept up with him, so I don't know where he is, mm. um, but, but he came up with a, lo with a lot of the names. One of the interesting names, of course, is Plantar, mm. who starts at the beginning, because Plantar is named after Pierre Plantar, and Pierre Plantar was the uh, Belgian trickster who created the whole Priory of Siam nonsense. And um, I mean, it was a stroke of genius. What, what he did, I mean, he was, he was an anti-Semite. He was a really nasty piece of work. He um, claimed to be the grand master of multiple secret societies. But his genius was to plant these, these false documents in the Bibliothèque Nationale in Paris. And for them to be found then, of course, by the people who wrote the Holy Blood and the Holy Grail, who took and believed every single um, line. And of course, Dan Brown took it and then believed every single line, even though it's absolute nonsense. <laughs> Although, what was quite fun was that um, I, was, I was working with the production team. I was just sort of doing a little bit of work with the production team of the Da Vinci Code. Uh, and I said to one of them, lovely guy, I said, you do know that the prior sign is a load of nonsense. And he looked <laughs> over at me and says, that's what they want you to think. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, Spider-Man actually um, had a, a question on this, that it might be a, a slightly, uh, it's like we're getting all these journalisty sort of tricky questions now all of a sudden. He's saying, uh, did you ever say to Dan Brown, an American tourist and a French female <laughs> psychic? Sound familiar? <laughs> what, what I always say is we have plenty of our fans, you know, 
writing that it must have he must have been inspired or worse um, personally, I've never made that statement. All I had to say is that we have fans who believe it. <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, you know, it's th th there are so much, so many similarities. Perhaps, perhaps.